Hey folks, Colin here from Something's Recording, and today I want to show you how to mix massive live grand piano. We're going to be looking at getting a big grand piano sound today, but before we dive in, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the thing for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist, and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and take a look at this grand piano. So I'm gonna play through this part here. I'm gonna actually mute out the vocal so we can focus in on the piano sound. Now I want you to hear what the finished piano sounds like and then I'm gonna take off the two plugins here and you can hear where we started with this piano. So you can hear the, the after and then you can hear our starting point here. So here's our finished piano for this mix. So what are the problems with our starting point here? Well, without our two plugins in, our piano is big sounding, but it's big in a bad way. It has a lot of mud, it has a lot of heavy low end that feels like it weighs the piano down and kind of gives it that dull, thuddy sort of sound. It's just muddy low end and it doesn't have a lot of brightness on top to give it some presence and to give it some attack to make sure it feels big and live inside the mix here. So. Solutions, a little bit of EQ. We're gonna use a couple different plugins here and then a little bit of compression to maybe emphasize that attack and hold some of these bigger notes in place so we can make the piano overall bigger and not just uh, the bigger notes here. So jumping in, we got our first EQ here and you can see we're making broader moves here, not a lot of little cuts. Otherwise we take away from that natural sound of a grand piano here. So we got three moves, we're gonna start with uh, the first move on the bottom here, which is a high pass filter. So we're up at 52.6 hertz here. So we're rolling the high pass up to about 50 hertz. I don't wanna go too far in here. Normally, if it was inside of a mix, if there was a lot of other instruments going on, I would probably have the high pass up somewhere around 100. We're gonna leave that lower octave in here to make sure we maintain that bigness while getting rid of any of that sub information that we don't need. So take a listen without this high pass and then with it in. Not a huge difference there, but it cleans up our low end and focuses the frequency range in on the heart of the piano sound. So first thing we're doing here, when you're mixing live grand piano, get a high pass filter in to clean up that bottom end there. Then we have a little cut here in the middle. You can see it's quite narrow, or not quite narrow, but a little bit narrowed from one here. We're at 1.74 on the Q. We're cutting about two and a half dB at 559 hertz here. I'm gonna play without the cut and then I'll boost this area up so you can see uh, the frequency range that we're attacking here. There was just a build up there happening and you can even see it visually on the EQ graph here. We have just a little bump, a little build up here in the middle. It's probably from the room the piano's in. You can hear it's quite a big sound. So we're gonna get some reflections coming back in from the room and it just feels like it's building up here in the mid range around 559 Hertz there. So just taking care of that there. And then our last move here, adding a touch of brightness, just a little bit here, about two dB at 
3.98, so about 4K here. Take a listen without, and then I'll click this and you can hear that, that brightness start to come into the piano sound. You can hear that little bump of brightness around 4K. It's not a lot. We're gonna add more brightness later. Don't, don't worry here. Just a little bump at, at 4K. It actually adds some attack to the front end of our piano hits as well there. That's our first EQ. So remember, broad moves here. You wanna maintain as much of that natural sound from the grand piano as possible to help it feel live. The next thing we're gonna do here is I wanted to use something smoother in terms of EQ. Instead of getting something like the Pro EQ here inside of Studio One, you can get quite surgical with it. We are staying broad with it, but I wanted something smoother with some analog vibe to it. And to me, there's nothing smoother than an API style EQ, especially for the top end. They boost top end very, very well. But I also like the way they cut in the mid range here. So we've got three moves across the board here. We're cutting a little bit down at 50 Hertz. 2 dB down at 50 Hertz. So pulling, pulling that low end down just a touch more. Then cutting 2 dB at 400 Hertz here. So bringing down that mid range, that low mid area. And then we have a 2 dB boost at 7K. So adding more brightness, but further up on the spectrum here. So I'm gonna turn off the compressor for a moment. We're just gonna AB this EQ here. You can see we got three moves and these are all peaks. So we're not using the shelving filter here. Take a listen. So remember 2 dB cut at 50, 2 dB cut at 400 hertz, and then 2 dB boost at 7K here. That's where we're gonna get that extra brightness from the piano sound. To me, what this EQ does, um, kind of visually, if you're picturing the situation here, for me, it's the difference between watching someone play the grand piano with the lid closed, maybe in a darker type hall. It feels kind of muddy, it feels kind of obscured, like there's a blanket over the piano, to lifting up that lid in a nice, big, bright hall. That's what it feels like when we kick the EQ in. It's got all that brightness, it feels more open, and we're getting rid of all that mud. Like we're opening the lid, taking a blanket off the piano here. So just just three moves, cutting some mid range, cutting some low end, boosting some top end. Last thing we're doing here on this piano, just to give it that extra kick of bigness, that extra presence, is adding a little bit of attack here with the, the FET comp. So an 1176 style compressor, uh, one of my favorite compressors, but it's gonna hit some of these bigger notes and make sure they tuck into the mix, but it's gonna emphasize the attack on them as well. As well. So double duty here with the FET comp. So take a listen without, and then I'll kick it in. You can see how gentle I'm being with the compressor here. We're doing maybe a dB and a half to maximum three dB of compression on some of the bigger hits uh, elsewhere in the song. But you can see we got quite, quite a few big hits here. Maybe some of these bigger stabs here have three dB of compression on them at the most, but very, very gentle because like I said, you wanna maintain as much of that natural sound from the live piano as possible because that's how you help it stay natural inside the mix is by not squashing it, not over EQing it. But even this little dB and a half, two dB of compression that we're getting here helps to even out the piano sound and emphasize some of that presence and attack that we're getting on these bigger hits with the those heavier sort of lands there. So take a listen now, all together here. So our two EQs and our compressor 
on this piano sound. So with, and then I'll take them off. So if you're struggling to get your grand piano, live grand piano to sound big and to sound lively inside your mix, a little bit of EQ and a little bit of compression goes a long way. Remember, broad moves on your EQ and use something maybe smoother like an API style EQ to get that nice pretty top end and a little bit of compression from a FET comp will have to help to add some attack as well as some presence and evenness across your piano. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.